Hello and welcome to the 12th tutorial of this series. In today's lesson, we'll be looking at the material editor. Now we won't be making any materials as such, but we'll be looking at how this part of the program works. Now to open up our material editor, just head over to the toolbar and hit this button, which says material editor. As Soon as you hit that, this box is going to pop up. But let's close that. Another way to bring it up, the more lazy way, is to simply hit M on your keyboard. As soon as you hit that, brings up the material editor window. Now, as soon as you open it, you notice these spheres in the center. These are our actual material slots. Now you can increase or decrease the size at which you display these materials in here by right clicking uh, on the actual material and then selecting a different sample size. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be using the three by two uh, sample size uh, so that it's more visible to you. Now to start off, as soon as you open this, as you go through the different materials, you notice the names here changing from one, two, three, four, uh, so on and so forth. Um, to change the name, it's quite simple. You just select that particular material and then call it whatever you want. Now you probably won't need to do this as much, but for the purpose of this tutorial, it's important that I show you. Now we've named that red. I'll just quickly give you a red color to keep things in perspective. Uh, say okay. And now we've got our red material. And at some point you might want to copy this material or maybe uh, create a new material quite similar to this but maybe only different in a very small aspect of it. So to do so, uh, you can either make the material from scratch or you can simply click and drag this material into the next slot and that copies it. The good thing about this is that it creates a brand new material, meaning whatever changes you make to this new one won't affect the original material. So we can change this to maybe uh, just just reduce that a little bit and then now we've got our whole new material we can either leave the name as it is or maybe change the name slightly and now we've got two complete different materials apart from creating our own materials 3d studio max has a lot of samples uh, within it to access these all you need to do is select any of the material slots so in this case I'm gonna use this and then click on the get material button and as soon as you click that, Material Map Browser pops up. Now you normally find it in this state. All the green, all the green bits are maps. These maps can be applied to other materials. So these are not materials themselves. What we want are the ones with the spheres. These are the actual materials you can use. When you access this, if new is selected, all that means is you are going to create a new material, maybe an architectural material, uh, a, a light, scape, metal, shellac. So all these will give you the possibilities to create new materials. But if you want an actual preset uh, within the program, you just go to material library. As soon as you hit that, it will bring up a few uh, materials for you. To select more, you just click on file, open, and this will show you a whole library of different preset material so we've got finishes furnishings masonry metals uh, in this case maybe let's go for um, site work for example as soon as you open that you notice we've got a whole lot of materials based on site work and planning so to take this material and move it into our material editor you just select whichever you want you've got little previews of it there and then just double click on the actual material for it to appear there. Once you finish selecting what you want, you can even click on the next slot and enter or open a new material in that slot as well. Once you're done, you just close that. Now to, to zoom into the material slightly, you just double click on it and that gives you a bit of a clearer picture of what that material is. Uh, you can't actually make it any bigger. Yeah, so that's as far as it goes with regards to zooming. So you close that. 
with the materials we've made ourselves, we've, we've got a lot of empty parameters to enter and create our materials. We've got map sections, but on the presets, we've got a lot of things already, already there. So we can either edit these or leave them as they, as they were. And that's how you get materials from the 3d studio max library. Now, when you want to apply any of these materials to an object, um, let me just create one for now. I'll make a box and maybe I'll make another box. So I'll just zoom out a little bit. Let's maximize that viewport. Now to apply material to an object, make sure that object is selected. So in this case, we've selected this and then select your material and then simply click on the assign material to selection button. As soon as you click that, your material has been assigned to the selection. You can either do that or you can simply click and drag a material to any object, whether it's selected or not. So I'll drop it to the green box. As soon as you do that, the material has been applied. And now what you also notice is that it's got four little triangles around the corners to show that that material is currently being used within this scene. The reason we're not seeing this material as it should be is because we haven't got this uh, show standard map in viewport button clicked. As soon as you hit that, you notice our material is now displaying as normal. So remember, anytime you apply a material with maps on it, um, let me, let me, yeah, so, Anytime you apply a material with maps on it, make sure you select this button so that you can see how the material will look like. Now, this, for example, this material doesn't have any maps and that's why we didn't need to click this button because it's just a bunch of colors, basically. Uh, let me just return that. So um, that's pretty much how you, how you create materials, how you get some materials from the library and how you apply them to our object. After creating a bunch of materials, you might decide to delete some of them or maybe, um, or go back to, to its original condition for you to either create a new one or edit that material. If you're going to reset a material that isn't currently in our scene, all you do is select that material slot and hit the X and this, bo this box will pop up saying um, the material settings will be lost. You just say yes, and that returns it to its original conditions. If you're not happy with that, you can just simply click and drag whatever's empty or whatever's still in its, in its original form, and then just drop it there. And that literally takes you back to where you came from with regards to the material. But when that material is being used on the scene, for example, um, this material here, no, I'll use the red, you simply, hit that button, but now we've got a different pop-up. At the top one is asking you to either delete the material from our material editor slot and the, and the scene, or you simply want to remove the material from this area and leave it appearing within there. But I'll be using the top one because I want to remove it from both um, the editor slot and the object. As soon as you click on that, you notice it takes us back to where we came from. And when you're done, remember, you just click close, continue working. And then most importantly, you just either hit M on your keyboard or go back to the toolbar section to activate it again. I'll be explaining more on how these sections work on the next couple of tutorials. But as for today, I think I've covered the basics I wanted to show you. Thanks very much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you on the next lesson. Bye for now.